Vin Studio, local and national real estate expert and consumer advocate, Ron Siegel. And hello again. Welcome to Ron Siegel Radio. This is the show with no real boundaries as we discuss current events, financial markets, politics, sports, even poking fun at the rest of the media. This is the show that connects the dots of confusion delivered by conflicting media reports. We connect the dots so you know the actions you can take. How your family, your business can benefit from current events. Most of all, thank you for joining me. Within every market there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800-306-1990. Let me remind you, if you ever have any related questions, just call me. I think I'm saying the things over and over again. Just remember, that's the number you call any time for assistance. When you call that number, it comes directly to me first. There are no operators standing by. I am it. Quiet, numbskulls. I'm broadcasting. Well, I do have a great team when it comes to developing a financing plan or plan to save you money. I personally work with you. Even if you don't have any needs today, save this number in your phone for future reference. 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990. Running a little bit on empty today. Ah, unbelievable events at the Anaheim City Council meeting last night. Spent uh, quite a bit of time there. I don't know how those council people... I left early and... and I don't know how those council folks do what they do, putting up with what they put up with. Not my cup of tea. We're going to talk a little bit about the results of that event later on in today's broadcast. It was very, very interesting uh, watching and listening to how the city was progressing. And ironically enough, the discussion of the Angels staying in Anaheim and... Or not, I'm sorry, it wasn't the Angels, it was Disneyland putting more money into Anaheim. Obviously, I'm having a tired morning today, but we'll get on with it and chat about, hey, you know something, I did see that we should be celebrating today, and I probably need, along with some extra coffee, chocolate with almonds. That is National Chocolate with Almonds Day today. Could use some of those, obviously, I've, uh, from what you've already heard this morning. Can use a little bit of extra coffee. Maybe Robert Mott will bring us some wine, and I don't know if that'll help or not. Uh, but we will continue and push on. The drought in California, that's uh, on the top of the news or at the top of some news. Tom Selleck got himself in a little bit of trouble there with that one. Have you seen that? That he decided that he was going to borrow a little bit of water, apparently, Borrowed truckloads of water from public hydrants, had them delivered to his Hidden Valley Ranch. It's according to court documents filed against the actor in Ventura County. Obviously, it's just court documents. Documents alleged theft. The water district spent nearly $22,000 to hire a private investigator, according to the complaint. Selick and his wife have lived have lived for nearly three decades at that ranch, which also includes an avocado farm. Complaint comes as California's historic drought drags on and resides. Residents are, are tasked with slashing water by 25%. Tom Selleck, not the way you want to be in the news. Speaking of not being the way you want in the news, have you followed the, the what's going on in San Francisco, the tragedy up in San Francisco? where you've got a convicted felon, an illegal immigrant, immigrant convicted of fel multiple felonies, sent out and comes back to, sent out of the country, comes back to San Francisco, kills Catherine Steinle, 32-year-old, while she was strolling with her father along San Francisco's waterfront area. Why is the guy there? Why is he allowed back in? Well, San Francisco is one of those cities that says, you know, we don't care about illegal immigration. We're not going to participate with the Department of Immigration. We're not going to turn over people regardless of what their requirements are. Well, now we find out this all took place earlier in the week. But now we find out that the gun that he used was allegedly a federal agent's gun that apparently was stolen out of the agent's car recently. Gets better and better or worse and worse on this one. Unbelievable. 
that this goes on. It is San Francisco, though, so you can't really say too much. You expect a bit of lunacy up there. They are the area that's brought us Nancy Pelosi for all these years. And now, all of a sudden, the bandwagoners are jumping on. Diane Feinstein saying that this person should not have been on the streets. Well, Diane Feinstein was or is from San Francisco, senator for the state of California. What are you going to do about it? You've got all you've got a number of these sanctuary cities around the country. I think there's like 33 states that have sanctuary cities in them. And the federal government does nothing about it. Basically, sanctuary cities are the ones that say, we don't care what the federal rules are, the federal government's rules are, we're going to do things on our own. Wait a second, isn't that what the Obama administration does too? They just basically say they're going to do things on their own, regardless of what the law is. And then you see lunatics like Josh Earnest, the president's spokes puppet, comes out and says, well, it's the Republicans' fault because they didn't pass comprehensive immigration reform. Really? You're absolutely useless. Talk about useless. You've got laws on the books. Now, what would happen if the, if the Republicans did pass comprehensive immigration reform? Does that mean that San Francisco is going to all of a sudden start following the law or enforcing the law? The law is already on the books. So what's the problem here? If the law is on the books, why are they not enforcing it? And why would that be anybody's fault other than those who do not enforce federal law? If you don't like the law, it's pretty simple in this country. It's not that you disobey it. You just get it changed. If you can't get it changed, you have to follow it. There's millions of people in this country that don't like the marijuana laws. Does that mean that they're not law? There's millions of people that have all kinds of different issues, different laws they like or don't like. That doesn't mean you just say, I'm not going to follow it because I don't like it. You do what you're supposed to do because that's the right thing to do. That's the way our country is set up. That's the way we work. Unbelievable how they go along with these, this kind of garbage out there. And they call it sanctuary cities. No, they're called criminal cities. San Francisco, that's what it is. Criminal. I think that they ought to take the, the mayor and city council or whoever's responsible for this. The mayor came out and said that they believe that this is the right thing to do. So if that's the right thing to do, isn't it also the right thing to do to send in the United States Department of Justice and arrest the crook? My personal opinion. Sometimes I get a little carried away. I've been known to have that happen once in a while. Simply amazing. Uh, we continue on. Boy, the news right now, we've got to watch what's going on very, very closely. We're seeing, I talked to you yesterday about what's going on with the bonds in Greece. And we were chatting about their, their issues and the problems that, how it's, how it's relaying to us, even though it's a very, very little country. Obviously, uh, I think the population of Greece is less than the population of Orange County. I know this, the country is smaller than Rhode Island, but they're having these big, this big uh, um, effect worldwide. But now, now we've got a bigger issue to deal with because this one's going to come even closer to home and it might be the reason or part of the reason that we see our Dow Jones down over 200 points right now. Well, it's China. You can't say China is just some little blip on the radar. Their stock market lost 6% last night and it's bringing the total stock market losses to 30%. 30%. That would be like our Dow Jones going down roughly 6,000 points. So what does that mean? And how are they going to deal with it? Well, unconfirmed rumors that the Chinese government is going to sell $300 billion of U.S. Treasury bonds to create liquidity to cover the sudden devaluation of their stock market. Who's going to buy those $300 billion of bonds and you got to remember, again, it's the same old economics that we've talked about because where we saw people going with that flight to safety, and yes, the U.S. Treasury is down another four basis points, yielding 2.22, that's because there's been a tremendous demand. And now we're looking the other side of it. If, we put, if 
China drops in $300 billion, that's going to be a lot of supply. Supply means prices go down, rates go up. We'll see what happens. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, we will chat wine with our friend Robert Mott. First time buyers finally crashing the real estate party. Habits to build a great credit score. And when is an adjustable rate mortgage the right option for you? Remember, you can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990, 800-306-1990, or ronsiegelradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We will be back in just a few. Are you currently renting a home? Do you like paying someone else's mortgage payment? Why not explore the options to purchase your own home? Can you imagine a 30-year fixed rate loan below 4.25% APR? This means with $10,500, you can purchase a $295,000 home and have a principal and interest payment of about $1,400 per month. What are you paying in rent? Does your family deserve the opportunity to take advantage of the current market? To learn more about these exciting opportunities, the Siegel Lending Team is standing by to speak with you. Call now, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Or 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. Not endorsed or sponsored by any government agency. Are you a veteran? Own a home and need money? The Siegel Lending Team is here to help veterans refinance and get the money they need. The VA 100 lets you borrow up to 100% of your home's value, refinance your mortgages, consolidate credit cards, and lower your payments by an average of $700 a month. And the Siegel Lending Team knows that character means more than a credit score. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. Licensed by the California Department of Corporations, NMLS 21037, and DRE number 01869452. Do you have a loved one who wants to stay in their home, but you have health concerns about it? The Preferred Care Team understands the challenges of caring for your loved ones. Their goal is to keep seniors as independent as possible while maintaining their health, safety, and overall well-being. Whether you need just a few hours a week or 24-hour care, Preferred Care caregivers are trained to meet your needs. Call Preferred Care at 714-696-9150. That's 714-696-9150. Or visit preferredcare.com. Are you a veteran, police officer, firefighter, doctor, nurse, or teacher? If so, you qualify as one of Ron Siegel's VIP heroes, and we have rewards up to $5,000 or $10,000 when you buy, sell, or refinance a home with one of the Ron Siegel Radio Partners. As one of the heroes, real estate agents will rebate part of their commission, lending partners will give a credit at closing, the title company has special published rates, and many other service providers have incentives too. All you need to do is call Ron Siegel Radio at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit VIPHeroProgram.com. Just think about what you will do with all the rebates and incentives from the partners of Ron Siegel Radio. Just call us at 800-306-1990 so we can show you our appreciation for your service. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio anytime at 800 306 1990. 800 306 1990. The Mortgage Minute today brought to you by Commerce for a Cause. If you are a business owner, you have a credit card processing system. How about Commerce for a Cause coming in and taking over the processing services for you, matching every one of your existing rates and setting aside 20% of your fees to go to the charity of your choice, Commerce for a Cause. Great partner to Ron Siegel Radio. Give me a call. I'd be happy to put you in touch with them. 
When are adjustable rate mortgages appropriate? When do they make sense for you? There are several times when you might want to consider the adjustable rate mortgage. First off, let's think about what the adjustable rate mortgage is, what it does. It's, most times it's a 30-year loan, so you've got a 30-year amortization, and you'll often hear them expressed as a five-year, seven-year, or 10-year arms. What that means is that period, five, seven, or 10, the rate is fixed for that period, for five years or for seven years, 10 years. And then it goes to an adjustable rate. So why would I say that it's good for you, especially when interest rates are as low as they are? Well, first time home buyers, you might wanna be looking at that, especially if you're an FHA buyer. Think about that lower interest rate because you're gonna to wanna to, uh, re, um, refinance out of that as soon as you can because you want to get rid of the mortgage insurance. The reason you're using an FHA loan is because you don't have a big enough down payment in most instances. You want to get rid of the mortgage insurance. If you get rid of the mortgage insurance, you can bring down your payments. You're planning on having that loan a short period of time. If you know you're going to be moving in a few years, why lock into a 30-year rate that's going to be higher? Save some money. If you know that you're, you have a habit of moving frequently or if you know that you've got kids that are you're going to be an empty nester soon or you're downsizing, right sizing, all of those are reasons why you might want to consider the adjustable rate mortgage. Again, it's part of an overall package. You might have said that Apple stock 20 years ago wasn't a good buy right at the time that Steve Jobs left. Well, you might, that didn't stay the same forever, right? It got better, and the same thing with your house. Think about that. Just because what was right 30 year loan 10, 20, 30 years ago, that might not be the right solution for you today. It's all part of a plan. You gotta work the plan. That's what it's all about. That is the Mortgage Minute, brought to you today by Commerce for a Cause. We Red, red wine means it's time for our Wednesday chat with our famous wine expert, Robert Mott. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Ron. Thank you very much. Glad to have you with us. I, I love looking at some of the notes we have for our chat this morning. Just because I, I sometimes have to bite my tongue, which I'm not really good at doing. Uh, we've noticed that about you, Ron. <laughs> so why do so many people hold their wine glasses the wrong way? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. It's it's one of my pet peeves too. I have a hard time biting my lip and not seeming like a real um, a real wine snob about this. But you know, a lot of people hold their wine glass by the bowl of the wine. And um, you know, first of all, I hate I hate seeing a dirty wine glass. And it's inevitable if you hold the wine glass by the bowl, you end up with lots of fingerprints on it. And it, after the end of an hour or an evening or whatever, it it looks really really disgusting. <laughs> uh, and it's you know it's it's hard to swirl, and I always worry about the, the the body temperature of your hand actually transferring to the wine and actually warming the wine up and affecting how the wine's going to be uh, perceived as well. You know, stemless wine glasses are one thing; uh, they're not my favorite, but it's certainly better than a coffee mug, that's for sure. But uh, just to review, um, the, the the proper way or the accepted way by those of us uh, <laughs> who are perhaps very passionate about our wines, anyway is to hold the wine glass is to either to pinch the stem or to hold it by the base of the wine glass. And, uh, you know, we ask people why they hold it by, by the bowl, and they, I guess they're, they're uncomfortable or not, they don't feel like they have uh, control of the glass if they're holding it by the stem or the base. But what I would encourage them all to do is take some time out and uh, occasionally at least start working into it, holding it by the stem or the base of the base, kind of develop their muscles and their coordination that way. And uh, eventually they'll, they'll get, get, look, get uh, to look like a uh, professional wine drinker. And uh, at least this is something that uh, will help you swirl the wine and, and, helps, and likely helps the presentation of the wine and keeps your friends from cringing or biting their tongues, as we said earlier. So that, that way it's not a useless thing like uh, holding out your pinky finger when you, uh, when you drink a cup of tea or something like that. This is something that actually 
you know, will make your friends uh, uh, feel better and probably make your wine taste better, too. It will taste your wine taste better just because you're not warming it up. I mean, that, that to me... I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm too American. You know, you go overseas in a lot of areas, and you know they can tell when we're that um, when Americans are there because we ask for ice, right? I mean, not for our wine, but in general. Yes. And you know, to me, a, a warm wine just doesn't seem like it's too exciting. I, I don't know. Well, you know, there there are times when I've I've actually you know purposely warm the wine up with my hands when somebody gives me a glass like a glass of chardonnay that's too cold for instance i'll put both my hands around the bowl for a few minutes just to try to warm it up some but that that shows you the impact of the of what holding a glass by the bowl does it actually can can very abruptly change the temperature of the wine absolutely so you know when you think of talking about changing the temperature of the wine I think you've shared with us a long time ago, and now that we're getting into the summer months and we're getting some areas uh, within our under our coverage, uh, it's a little warm. Some areas it's not as warm. What's the quickest way to chill wine properly? Well, the quickest way to chill wine properly, uh, it, it really goes back to it's, it has to do with heat transfer and thermodynamics. And I'll, I'll, I'll not go into my prior background in engineering to talk about that. Thank you. Say. Putting a bottle of wine in the refrigerator uh, is probably the slowest way to chill it down. Uh, the transfer of heat between air and through the glass and into the fluid of the wine is a very slow process, and it takes can take you know an hour or two hours or more uh, to actually get the, end t- the temperature of the liquid down to uh, the temperature that you're, the cooler temperatures you're looking for. So the fastest way to, to cool the contents of a bottle of wine, uh, you know, get an ice bucket. Uh, or some other container like that. So you can use your sink if you want to. Um, you know, put a lot of ice in there and fill it with water too. So you want that ice water mixture together. And what that does is that ensures that every you know it transfers the heat very rapidly. And uh, if especially if you you know spin the bottle a little bit, you know, kind of twirl it like a like champagne bottle for instance. Uh, you can uh, you can chill a wine down in 15, 20 minutes really really easily that way. But it's important to have the water, the fluid in there when you're in your ice bath. It's a, it's very very important. Ice by itself uh, is b- probably better than air, but not much. Uh, so it's I think the main thing is to get that water in there, and, and so you get the, that that uh, that constant surface temperature, that constant low surface temperature against the glass to, to transfer that heat out of the out of the uh, the, the contents of your bottle. Interesting. Now, can I get my wine? Will my wine get damaged if I make it too cold? You know, too cold is extreme cold is not nearly as bad as extreme heat, and so uh, cold is known to slow down the aging process of wine. And you know, even if your wine's fluctuating between you know kind of the ideal fifty five, fifty seven degrees Fahrenheit, and even into down as low to the mid thirties. As long as that fluctuation happens gradually, it's not really that bad. So those people who have perhaps have cabins or what in the mountains and worry about their wines in the winter, uh, I wouldn't worry that much. Now, there is a concern, of course, if you get it so cold that for an extended period of time that the liquid inside freezes. Uh, as we know, as we put, uh, as I'm sure all of us have done it one time or another, we're going we're to chill that thing down in a hurry and put a, a bottle of soda or something like that in the freezer and we forget about it and it freezes and then it explodes. As we know, liquid inside uh, a bottle as it freezes will expand, and so that could put a lot of pressure on the cork on, on your wine bottle, or could even crack the bottle. And so, at the very least, it might make a mess, and oh, one way or the other. Um, so, wine freezes around 15 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, just as a just for as a point of reference there. So, if obviously the bottle, you'll know if the bottle's cracked. It'll obviously be a big mess, <laughs> in your, whatever container you had this in. Uh, but if, it, if, it, if the cork has moved, it might be a little less clear. Uh, but as the wine warms up, it's, very, it's, it's somewhat likely that some oxygen may be brought back into the bottle and then prematurely age your wine. So keep a, an eye out if you see a bottle of wine that you've frozen inadvertently. Keep an eye out for uh, any signs of leakage, such as, you know, like a sticky cork or wine stains or, um, you know, a lot of times uh, uh, wine will run out from underneath the foil. Uh, over the the capsule uh, of the uh, of the of the bottle, and so there's really no way to tell if it leaked except uh, in that way, except after you've opened it, and it it may still be okay. It may not at that point. It just depends on how long it's been exposed to oxygen. 
hope that uh, hope that answered your question, Ron. Sorry, Ab- no, absolutely, no. It's great information. It's the, the the obvious problem there is you, not only that, not only going to make a mess, you're going to ruin a good bottle of wine. Absolutely, that's that that. That, my friend, is a cardinal sin, as we know. Absolutely. Great information, as always, from Robert Mott. Thank you for joining us every Wednesday. You're listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets when we come back. First-time buyers, they're finally getting to the party. And seven habits to build a great credit score. We'll talk about all that and more. You can reach me anytime. Our off-air number, 800-306-1990. 800 306 1990 or com. Don't forget, all of our programs are now on YouTube as well as Ron Siegel Radio in the archives. You can connect with us on Facebook.com forward slash Ron Siegel Radio, on Twitter at Ron Siegel. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. Did you know that banks and credit bureaus are rewarded financially if you have bad credit? And the worse your credit score is, the more money they can make off of you? How does that make you feel knowing that banks are getting rich off of your hard-earned money? How does it make you feel knowing that if a bank or a credit bureau makes a mistake on your credit report, they benefit from it and it hurts you? The Fair Credit Report Act of 1971 requires banks and credit bureaus to report only accurate information, and nearly 100% of all credit reports are inaccurate. If you're sick and tired of being broke and tired of being robbed by the banks, you owe it to yourself and to your family to call Rondi. Rondi is a FICO-certified credit professional and has helped thousands of people just like you get out of debt and establish great credit. Rondi's number is 855-608-1990. Again, that's 855-608-1990. Or visit creditsanitizer.com. Again, that website is creditsanitizer.com. Attention homeowner 62 and older. Do you worry if you can afford to keep your home? Are you concerned about paying all your monthly expenses? Or do you simply wish you could live a better retirement? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you may qualify for a program that can help. It's called FHA Reverse Mortgage. It's insured by the federal government. You'll receive tax-free money. You aren't required to make any monthly mortgage payments, and you still own your home. Siegel Lending Team is a local leader in FHA Reverse Mortgages. Call free to get your free reverse mortgage guide, free custom quote. And when you call now, you can get all your questions answered by local experts. There is no monthly mortgage payment and tax-free money you can use for health care expenses, home improvements, or just live a better retirement with peace of mind. Call 800-306-1990. That's 800-1990 to get your free reverse mortgage guide and quote. You'll also find them on the web at SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Call 800-306-1990 now. Are you purchasing or own a luxury home? If you're like so many others, your home is your largest asset and the mortgage is your largest debt. The Siegel Lending Team has some amazing financing opportunities right now. Jumbo loans up to $2 million, 30-year rates below 4%, 15-year rates near 3.5%, and if you can believe it, 7-year interest only hybrids in low threes. The Siegel Lending Team has all the options for your jumbo or second home loan requirements. Take advantage of them while you can. To learn more about all the other financing products available from the Siegel Siegel Lending Team, call 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Or visit SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com. Again, call 1-800-306-1990. Rates subject to change without notice. Licensed by NMLS ID 217037 and 145502. Equal housing lender. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert, Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message, and as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 800 306 1990. Your Credit Matters segment today brought to you by CreditSanitizer.com. You have a credit report, it is wrong. What are you doing about it? Credit Sanitizer has the solutions for you. You've got the information now. It's up to you to make a decision to help yourself 
to help your family. So what are some habits that you can get into to build a great credit score? Talk about credit on a regular basis just because it's such an important issue in our lives in general. We're talking about home and finance. Credit. Why is that? What is the bottom line to it? So think about this. We had Aaron Hebner on the show oh, some time ago, and he was sharing some specific numbers with us on what it takes or what the effect is of bad credit. And I think the number was 650 to 750 FICO scores, comparing the two of them. And if you have one mortgage and one $35,000 car, the difference between those two means you're going to be wasting $500 a month, $6,000 a year. So what are some strategies to help you there? First off, get your financial house in order. You need a budget. Get your budget together. Know where your money is coming from, what your money is going to. Make sure that you have the emergency fund. That's another key element, having that emergency fund so that when the unexpected happens, and it will, you're ready for it financially. You can't prepare for an accident or a car breaking down or any of these other things. You don't know when that's going to happen. The only thing you know is it will happen. At some point in time, it happens to all of us. So you have that in your budget. You have that rainy day fund set aside. And I like to have that safety net. You know, if you can have six months worth of all of your expenses set aside, you don't have to worry if you have a medical issue that puts you uh, puts you on the shelf on the on the on the DL for a little while if you've got a car accident lose a job any of those things that are unexpected so getting your financial house in order pay the balances down on your credit cards that's a key issue pay the balances down don't pay them off you can pay them off but make sure you continue using them if you pay your balance in full okay but we don't want those balances to be at zero too long because then it becomes a inactive trade line and it stops giving you the benefit of having active trade lines and old trade lines on your credit report. Your credit, credit, credit utilization ratio is very important. That's the amount of debt that you have compared to your, your available balances. And ideally, if you can keep that at 30% or less, you're going to be in great shape. 10% is even better. So there's where some of those numbers come in. If you go to zero, it won't show an established payment history, but they can use in their calculations. So you want to have it as some number, some positive number. I don't care if it's for the amount of a cup of coffee because you can't divide by zero. So if you have a 10,000 divided by zero, guess what? It comes up with a bad number for them. So you want to have it as a small number, but not a incalculable number. Pay your bills on time or before. Now here's the one that, I, that so many people miss. And the reason I say so many people miss this is I say pay your bills on time or before. What is the definition of on time? That's where the that's where the problem comes in. On time means you need to make sure if you're doing minimum payments that the, the institution gets that payment before the due date. And that's a very, very important focus. But here's the other side of it. If you're one of those people that use your credit cards a lot, you want those points or those rewards, whatever it is, and you're using everything on your credit card. I'm one of those. I do everything on a credit card. I don't use cash for hardly anything. Why would I want to? I don't need to carry a lot of cash. So here's the issue. Go into your credit card statement. Go online to the credit card company, your credit card servicer, and take a look at the balance on your account about a week before your statement closing date. That's an important date. Statement closing date, not the due date. Statement closing date. And you want to make your payment as much as you can to try and get it down to that 10 or 30 percent utilization that we just talked about. You want to make that payment so it posts 
before the statement closing date. That way your balance is as little as possible on that date. Why do you want to do that? Well, your credit card isn't going to report every day to the credit reporting bureaus. When they send that over at the statement reporting date, you want that balance low. If you do that, you're in good shape because the utilization when it's presented to the bureau, it's calculated at that time. Now you go out and you start using your card again, building up the balance again. And I don't care if your balance is at 100% between the time of the statement closing date and the next statement closing date, if you've paid it off just before that date. Does that make any sense? You understanding that, following that? So you get a statement closing date, and let's just throw a number on there. Say your statement closing date is July 15. Well, I want you to go in today and make a payment on there to pay as much as you can so that that posts by July 14. That way when it's on the 15th, you've got the lowest possible balance. Now, if you go out and start using that card on the 16th or 17th again and build it up as much as you want, I don't care because on August 8th, you're going to do the exact same thing. You're going to go in and look, make a payment before August 14 so that it's there when August 15 and you get the best possible scoring. Now, if you can't do that, set up an automatic payment for the minimum payment due, whatever your normal minimum is, so that that gets posted before the payment due date every month. Go into your bank, your online banking, and set that up. Now, I hear folks say, well, I'm going to pay this off and close the credit card. Don't ever close the credit card unless there's a major, major reason, such as it's got too high a fee. Well, if you've got one that's got too high a fee, don't close it yet. What I want you to do there is go get one that does not have a high fee and let that one age. You want to have it any something over two years old, over four years old. You need to make sure that that happens properly because that's going to be the age of your credit cards. 15% of your FICO score comes from that. I want you to make sure you're monitoring your credit and dispute inaccuracies. I've shared this with you almost every morning for the last five years that your credit report is wrong. Why do I know that yours is wrong? Because they're all wrong. And so I've been looking at credit reports since the 90s. I've never seen one that's completely correct. So that's the idea there. The right mix of credit, installment, and mortgage is going to get you another 10%. So if you have three credit cards, two car payments, one mortgage, that's going to get you the maximum. That's the best numbers they're looking at. And here's another one that, that a lot of people forget about. Check with your creditors for lower interest rates, offers, and if they can increase your credit limit. Now, I didn't say increase your credit usage. I said for you to talk to your creditors about increasing your credit limit. You see, when I talked to you earlier about credit utilization, that's the amount you've used divided by the balance, or the balance divided by the amount available, sorry. The balance divided by amount available, that's your utilization. Well, the two ways to affect that, one by paying down the balance, the other way is to simply get the, the limit increased, right? Either way, it work, comes out with the same value, the same benefit. So consistently ask for higher limits, but don't use that money all the time. You don't need to be using the money all the you know, to continue using that. My idea there, or my, my recommendation there, is just continue to get those limits increased, balances down, pay on time, pay before the statement due date, and just watch what happens to your credit scores. And then the other part of it, obviously, because this is the Your Credit Matters segment brought to you by Credit Sanitizer, is I suggest you get a credit report at least twice a year. You get that free one once a year. Make sure you're looking at a real FICO score, not the, not the Vantage score or the FACO score. But that does mislead people most of the time. Many times I get so many calls about people telling me they've got an 860 FICO score. I say, well, that's probably something that's probably an advantage score because the max on FICO is 850. 
and I've never seen one that's perfect yet, just the way it is. I've seen some pretty high ones, but never perfect. So check that on a regular basis. Talk to our friends over at creditsanitizer.com. Have them help you get your score corrected, maximized, so that you're when it's time to buy a house, buy a car, furniture, whatever, you've got the best possible scores. You are listening to Ron Siegel Radio, discussing your real estate, current events, and the financial markets. When we come back, we're going to talk about what's happening with Anaheim and Disney, some stadium conversations. We've got stadiums they're talking about in Anaheim and in San Diego, so we'll chat about that a little bit. And first-time buyers finally crashing the real estate market. All that and more, you can reach us anytime. Our off-air number is 800-306-1990. 800-306-1990 or ronsegalradio.com. Connect with us, facebook.com forward slash ronsegalradio on Twitter, at Ron Siegel. And don't forget, you can get all of our broadcasts now. We record them on video. I don't know if you want to see my face, but it's there on YouTube. Stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few. In the middle of our streets, our house. Do you have a goal of mortgage-free home ownership? What if your home was valued at $500,000? Are you aware that a free and clear home could be costing you $2,500 every month, $30,000 per year? The mortgage planners at the Siegel Lending Team would like to show you how you can own your home, generate tax-free income, and accumulate family wealth. You simply need to call Ron Siegel at 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. By sending the team a copy of your most recent mortgage statement, the team will send you a no-obligation mortgage adoption plan. You be the judge if it's right for your family. Again, all you have to do is send the team a copy of your mortgage statement by email to map at ronsegalradio.com or call today, Ron Siegel, 1-800-306-1990. That's 1-800-306-1990. Rate subject to change without notice. License by the California Department of Corporation and MLS 217037 and BCAL BRE number 0186945. Southern California attorneys have over 15,000 real estate agents to call in Orange County for their personal and professional needs. Why do they overwhelmingly call Melinda Johnson? Simple. It's the Melinda Johnson trifecta. Melinda is an attorney, real estate broker, and realtor. Does your family deserve the same professional services California lawyers demand? Call Melinda Johnson at 714-863-5485. That's 714-863-5485. Or on the web at freedomfirstproperties.com. In these uncertain times, it's getting harder and harder to find a safe and effective method of investing. If you're looking at retirement options that can provide some real security for you and your family, look no further than a reverse mortgage with Siegel Lending Team. Hundreds of thousands of other Americans are already taking advantage of reverse mortgages. It allows you to eliminate monthly mortgage payments, pay some bills, or simply enjoy your retirement more. A government-insured reverse mortgage with Siegel Lending Team allows seniors to stay in their home and turn their equity into tax-free cash. To qualify, there are no credit score requirements. And remember, you continue to retain complete ownership of your home. Call 1-800-306-1990 to receive a new special edition handbook, Feature Reverse Mortgage Borrowers. Plus an educational brochure absolutely free. Find out more. Call Siegel Lending Team today, 1-800-306-1990. SiegelLendingTeam.com. That's S-I-E-G-E-L LendingTeam.com or 1-800-306-1990. Ron Siegel Radio Date Night Trivia, presented by Reunion Kitchen and Drink. Friday, Ron will pose a question based on on on-air conversations during the prior seven programs. The person to post the answer according to the guest conversation will win a date night package, including a dinner gift card for Reunion Kitchen and Drink. You might even be able to say hi to Ron when you visit Reunion Kitchen and Drink. You're listening to Ron Siegel's Home and Finance Show with local and national expert Ron Siegel. Now, here's Ron. Welcome back to Ron Siegel Radio. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted guidance. That's my message. And as your consumer advocate, I will be delivering it every day on Ron Siegel Radio or anytime at 800 306 1990. 306 1990. The real time real estate segment today brought to you by the VIP Hero program. Love that program. 
Of course, that's probably why we developed it. Ron Siegel Radio VIP Hero Program. It is to benefit our local heroes. It would be military, active, retired, reserve, law enforcement, firefighters, teachers, medical caregivers. You got all those discounts that you heard about during the during the break. Just give us a call. We'll put you in touch with some of those service providers if you need them. So it's about time. We're starting to see the first time buyers finally crashing the real estate party. They're the ones that drive the party. That's basically uh, the, the oldest story in the book that real estate is all about pushing. And you have to push somebody somewhere to do something. And here's the concept is if you've got a first time home buyer coming in buying that entry level property, the person in the entry level property then gets pushed into the next level up and that continues all the way until you make the full circle when you've got the person whose time it is to right size, kids are out empty nesters, they might say, okay, I don't mind having that two bedroom again. I don't need a five bedroom house or a four bedroom house or whatever. So the most recent existing home sales report from the National Association of Realtors Quote, the percent share of first-time buyers rose to 32% in May, up from 30% in April, and matching the highest share since September 2012. A year ago, first-time buyers represented 27% of all buyers. Recent, recent Washington Post article, quote, according to a June 19th Campbell Inside Mortgage Finance tracking survey, Pulse 2,000 real estate agents nationwide. First-time buyers accounted for nearly 39% of home purchases in May, the highest number since April of 2010. Bottom line, it seems that the number of first-time buyers is increasing for the first time in a long time. This further lends credence to the fact that the residential housing market is back. Also, if you've got all those new buyers coming in, the household formations, as we've talked about, with our friends from Chapman University, household formations. Well, if that's all happening, that's going to create more demand. We talk about this all the time, more demand for the properties. You get more and more demand, well, you keep on getting that prices going up. And as long as they're not going up at a insane pace, we're in good shape there. Hopefully they'll, they'll continue to increase, but not too insanely. So I wanted to share with you today a little bit about experience last night. I, I had some opportunity to go over with the city council in Anaheim and just watch what was going on there. Very, very fascinating to see what was happening. It was a big vote. And ironically, it should have, to me, I heard this commentary there over and over again and it made sense. The biggest no-brainer of all time was the vote last night at the Anaheim City Council, but there was hours and hours and hours of discussion on it. I left, uh, I think I got there about 4.30, left about 9.30, and they were still going strong. I have no idea how long they went. I, I did get a report back from our team as to what happened and what the results were, and it's very, very astounding to me. Um, Maybe no-brainers is the right solution. Here's what the, the topic was. Disney, since 1996, has had an agreement with the city of Anaheim where they will not have an entertainment tax in the city of Anaheim. And more specifically, there won't be an entertainment tax on Disney. Now, it's been very, very successful since 1996. Disney has created thousands of jobs. They've created thousands of dollars in tax revenue through other streams for the city. Actually, it's probably millions of dollars of tax revenue. And the Disney has come up, and they're, they're about to the end of that time period. Now, here's the irony of it. The city council in 1996 voted for this to be a 20-year proposal, or 20-year agreement. And really, when you think about it, agree agreements between cities and states and business are very, very common. You, you in, give an incentive to business to do what you want them to do and to, to have a good partnership. 
Well, ironically, the, the city council voted unanimously in 1996 to adopt this resolution to have no entertainment tax and get Disney to, to put in a bunch of money into the city. One of the people voting for that was Tom Tate, city councilman. Tom Tate is now the mayor of Anaheim. Now here's what the new proposal is. is the proposal is to extend the existing agreement, extend the existing agreement that has been extremely successful for another 30 years if Disney puts up a billion dollars, one billion dollars of capital improvements to the area. The park, parking, they already take care of some of the surrounding neighborhoods. But a billion dollars Disney has to put in to get to get this agreement. Or if Disney puts in a billion and a half dollars, the agreement becomes 45 years. And when you look at the outside independent economic review of it, they're coming back saying that it would result in $17.9 million extra hotel stays. And obviously the city gets a transient occupancy tax on that. And it could generate $26.8 million per year if Disney does that $1.5 billion investment. So we're looking at $565 million to $847 million per year in economic activity by this vote and 3,000 to 45,000 additional jobs. Now I've been, I, I know that you, you listen to the news. When was the last time that you heard every single organization agree? Now this would be unions, businesses, obviously Disney is for it. Disney's competition is for it. They're all there in support. They all made statements in support of, the, of, of, of this uh, agreement. Hotels, union workers, firefighters, police officers, concrete workers, the concrete workers' companies, everybody. Now, why in the world would the mayor and one other city council person vote no? Well, they came up and said they don't want to... In, to put a policy on that's going to affect the city for the next 30 or 45 years. What's their job? If they're not doing things that are going to better the city for the next 30 years or 45 years, why don't they just go start picking up trash around Disneyland? Because that will affect the immediate future. That doesn't affect the long-term future. What is their problem? Do, are, do they qualify as no-brainers? They couldn't give any clear answer that I've heard to date as to why they are against this, this uh, resolution. I did see in one of the local papers that they said they don't want to, to tie the hands of future, future councils with a vote now. Well, if they dis do you think Disney's tying up their hands, putting a billion dollars? And I don't care about Disney. Do you think they're tying their hands? They're making a commitment to the city, but the mayor and the city council does not want to make a commitment to them. Where in the heck are their heads? Or maybe what is in their heads? What's the problem here? Now, I've never been one of the biggest fans of the mayor's policies, but holy cow, do your job. Your job isn't to vote no on everything. I mean, you voted yes on this 20 years ago, and you were right. When, do you, when does anybody ever get to vote for anything where they've got a, a historic guide that says this is what we did and it worked? It worked to perfection. And now let's just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Well, the mayor here, he's saying, well, we did this right in 1996, so let's change. We don't want to do it right anymore. Really? Is that what this is all about? Now, how does that affect San Diego? How does it affect other events in Anaheim? Well, San Diego and Anaheim both are similarly looking at teams that are contemplating leaving. And it's all over stadium issues. Look at something like this. Why not look at this as a guideline 
to what's going on in San Diego, what's going on in Anaheim. Maybe they can put together a business and community pack. This added absolutely nothing in debt to the city. Try and figure it out. I don't, I don't get it. What are, what are some of these companies, what do they want other than a roadmap to success and 3,000 or 4,000 new jobs and half a billion dollars a year in productivity? I'll get off the soapbox because you are listening to Ron Siegel Radio. And be sure to set that first radio preset button to come back here every day to join Ron Siegel Radio where we only speak about items affecting your house, your bank account. Thanks to all of our sponsors. A big thanks to Steve who's engineering us today. And of course, a special thanks to you for spending a little bit of your day with us. That's all for Ron Siegel Radio. Again, if you have any questions, call me anytime, 800-306-1990, 800 306 Remember, make a lot of money, help a lot of people, have a lot of fun, have a great day. We'll talk to you next time on Ron Siegel Radio. Our house in the middle of our streets, our house.